So Halloween H2O is a very interesting entry into this franchise. Obviously, it is an anniversary film taking place 20 years after the original and sort of a reboot to the series. Critics call Halloween H2O sensational, <laughs> smart and non-stop scary. Finally, a sequel that lives up to the original. Halloween. Right, because Laurie Strode is back. There's no Jamie. They sort of ignore all the movies except for the first two. They're so they're still keeping that brother and sister thing and leading it over to H2O. Sort of leading into the facts. I did find out that this movie wasn't intentionally supposed to be 20 years later because it only became that when Jamie Lee Curtis came in, came involved, like process or whatever. So apparently she came back to kill Michael for good, but then it eventually turned into a mere paycheck gig. She says in a statement telling a HalloweenMovie.com they thought I thought hmm wouldn't it be interesting if we made an anniversary movie see what happened with to Lori Strode that's how it began she took lunch with Deborah Hill and Carpenter to invite their invo and their involvement but both Carpenter and Hill just weren't interested and their schedules were conflicting so they can do anything about that and then she went to Steve Miner director I think for Friday 13th part 2 and 3 I think I know he did 3 but he she went to him talking about hey you know let's do an anniversary movie and the concept would be a scenario where sort of the whole movie is that Lori she, she has PTSD she she has trauma you know you know obviously trauma like issues and whatnot and then she stops running stands up to my go with a powerful return and wanted to end him it takes place on this private school where she's also a teacher she has a son now which they have a really strained relationship because she's very overprotective and she's afraid that one night Myers might come back and kill both her and her son she has like nightmares and just sees hallucinations of him throughout this California like town that she's in she changed her name and everything and then uh, I think later on it probably later on she didn't admit to, to the fact that there were some good things in the film but oh i mean i'm sorry hold on take that back there were some good things in the film talking about alcoholism and trauma but in the end she really just ended up doing it for the paycheck and i don't think the paycheck was even that much i think she was the least paid actor on this movie i think i, I heard it was fifteen thousand dollars and she would come back in the next movie for more because she wanted this to, to be the end but obviously it wasn't the original script was supposed to set an all-girl prep school involving a copycat killer helping cops track down michael and was designed to go to to video some kind of big issues there halloween is such a you know very popular thing it's very household name so with everyone knowing what halloween is and a very hardcore you know fan base going to straight to video would have been not a good thing vod i don't know what it was like back in 98 but probably you know was very different there's no netflix no hulu no streaming services yeah it would have been bad it would have been really bad and then a copycat killer again people want michael myers so a copycat killer probably would have pissed off a lot of people and it was piggybacking up on um, on the scream success this is a 98 scream and came out 96 it feels like every movie in terms of horror after scream try to do like a copycat killer or like where it looked like scream this kind of feel like scream a little bit it's not full-on scream h2o but it's definitely like 90s like oh hey scream was successful let's do this as well so that would have pissed off a lot of people off but here it says oh yeah and the uh, documented blood is thicker than water prior to jamie lee curtis's involvement they've already like contacted mustafa akkad and dimension films about a, a director video script Prior did decide from the very beginning before even Jamie Lee Curtis was involved they intended it to be like sort of like a soft reboot it says that they decided to simply ignore six convoluted ending and was free to create his own concept of Michael stalking an all-girl prep school what would be interesting but again people want Myers people really want Myers and then yeah Curtis became involved and it was a, basically a curveball forced them to just change it to, to an anniversary film which I think was a good choice because I really dig this movie I think it's really good not a lot of people talk about it I can see why well so when Donald Pleasance so in the beginning Beginning, the opening shot which by the way the remix uh, orchestra theme for this movie I like quite a bit obviously the theme is you know iconic but this is my, my second favorite of the orchestra like the one two three one two and then it's like the trumpet or something playing in the background as well I think that's pretty good I, I like that it sort of remix to it it's my second favorite but the voice of Spongebob was doing his best Donald Pleasant's impression <laughs> in the opening credits so uh, Tom Kenny famous for the voice of Spongebob Squarepants like did that opening of Donald Pleasant's saying the infamous the blackest eyes in Devil's Night speech, and that was interesting. Just imagining SpongeBob SquarePants saying that. Hold on, Charlie was going to be the killer, the copycat killer. Okay, Adam Hand, he was told he was going to be the killer, was copying Michael Myers and wrecking havoc on a boarding school. Oh shit! So this would have been a uh, Friday 13th Part Five sort of a scenario where probably would have pissed off a lot of people off. People were too high on Friday 13th Part Five, a new beginning of a copycat killer. Doing the same here was definitely would have backfired. Would have been a huge backlash. Yeah. Josh Harnett, the the son, 
He filmed Shield at the same time as well as The Faculty. I didn't even watch that movie. The Faculty? I've definitely heard about it. I was way too young. I wasn't even born yet in 98. But I mean, this, this isn't uncommon, right? I mean, some actors still do that. Like The Rock, he's super busy. He's always keeping busy. So he's got to be shooting films at the same time, right? Because, man, he's just only jacked. But he's just, like, super busy. But, I mean, you know, interesting, I guess. He shot this H2 and Faculty at the same time. Okay, how did they not? Oh, this is so dumb. They got surprisingly far into production before realizing they hated the new Myers mask they created. So let's talk about that. The Myers mask in this one. I think the white plain face looks good. The eyebrows is a bit too much, but the eyes, we, we, see, we see the eyes and the, the hair is fine as well. The, this mask and H2O and I mean, it looks like the same mask in Resurrection, but I could be wrong. It, they look fine. You know, the eye thing is like, ugh, don't show his eyes. I think that, that ruins it for me. Maybe, I don't know about you guys, but it just kind of ruins it for me, honestly. So they were shooting this so-called Casper mask for three weeks. It was very ghostly white and futureless. However, no one told director Steve Miner that it would lead to multiple arguments and left H2O's Michael sort of stuck in the background. Oh shit, stuck in the middle. Uh, Miner liked the Casper mask, but was overruled for that day of shooting, which involved the opening scene of the movie. So the opening scene of the movie has the Halloween 6 mask, which looks good. I like it. And this, they had the mask change in this movie quite a bit. They did not know what mask. Isn't there like a CG mask? Yeah, there is. This has CG mask looks awful jesus christ and there was like new masks created they spent nearly three million in reshoots to refilm any of the close-ups they already did with the casper mask jesus christ in one instance however they the set they used during a casper mask portion of the production was no longer available meaning it was not able to be uh, reshot with the close-up masks the whole mask is again they couldn't get it right for some reason even though they did in halloween six just use the halloween six mask but they wanted a new continuity so they want to create a new mask so you know three million i mean that's back then inflation now probably like what two five or something uh, basically more maybe double digit million but yeah so uh, jamie jamie's mother uh lady from psycho janet uh she's in Uh, she's in this movie she cameos as uh, her actual mother and then in the background she you see this car where she's going to she's going into and that car is the same model of the car from the psycho movie the first one which is it's kind of a, a horror easter egg because they're both mother and daughter in real life and just kind of a cool little reference and horror wrinkle throughout other franchises it was awesome i remember seeing them thinking to myself oh this is tight this is cool i like this this is fantastic damn something about the goddamn score they just keep rushing this apparently they had five days to finish the score just like with john carpenter he like what did that in three days like they were doing crunch time on the score so this composer john ottoman was under instructions to from steve Miner to create a score with mixed carpenter with something out of hedgecock movie and so when he converted the template tracks into four orchestra recordings the production team was simply confused what well, created felt like it belonged in a different movie steve Miner was already too busy with his next movie lick plus e to defend him oh god lick plus e honestly the orchestra theme remix again i like it it's my second favorite sort of remix of the theme i didn't mind it at all they replaced Ottoman's original score with a possible new one, more slasher like, which forced Dimension to move up the release date to a full month, which was left in just five days to finish the score. The result is an Otto Frankenstein's monster of score doing Ottoman's original and this other um, person's score. Even Production Hell, The Curse, and we're going back to The Curse of Michael Myers. So it seems like this movie had a slightly, somewhat of a little curse, right? It wasn't as bad as Six. Six was horrible. But yeah, you know what? This one was not not too bad. Apparently, they were supposed to introduce Dr. Loomis's daughter, Rachel. Rachel Loomis, who would have computer files on Lori Strode at her home computer and then would be killed by Myers. That was replaced with the one chick from Halloween 2 that comes to Loomis to say that you need to come back. You know, just, just introduce a random Loomis daughter. Admittedly, if they do that, I don't know. It seems like, hey, why you introduce this Loomis legacy and just kill them off? And it would have been a headache, basically. There was a one time, so th there was a plan for Michael Myers to speak a single line at the end of the movie. He was to have said, Lori, just before being beheaded by Jamie Lee Curtis. Immediately, this idea was dropped from the final script. Uh, with the later movie that seems to have pissed off a lot of people as well so that would have been interesting now let's get back to the actual film talk about the film the opening scene right the doctor or whatever from loomis she gets killed first of all these bunch of these kids get killed she gets killed by myers trying to find out where laurie is because she's changed her name and everything about her identity she's find that out the orchestra theme plays i like it it's awesome laurie stro is, is struggling right life is this is not this life is not being too great to her she's struggling strange relationship with her son she you know tries to be normal kisses the this other teacher a lot because you know why not and 
while that's happening, Myers, I do like about this film, Myers is just slowly catching up to her. I, I don't know why, it's just something so like little, but something about that I like quite a bit where Myers is just slowly and itching, coming closer and closer and closer to Lori in, in this little California town or like small private school. And then while that's happening, that's why she starts having hallucinations and her son specifically says she's crazy, like he's dead, you need to get past this. He's kind of being an asshole about it, but also being very cynical about it, you know, it's like, hey, just get over this mom. It's been 20 years, please. If something would have happened already, it's already been 20 years. Move on. Stuff like that. And so obviously, this movie obviously has those kids, Josh and his friends or whatever. They're messing around. They're supposed to go on this trip, right? Because she's worried about him dying in this trip. Turns out, you know, she probably won't worry about him staying because that's where Myers will come to them in this little, like, private school. So her, them and them group of friends, they, Myers gets to them first. They start killing them one by one. They get into the school. And we have this door shot of Lori and Michael's meeting face to face. That was a very awesome scene, very powerful scene of them seeing each other for the first time in 20 years and being actually real. Lori with big eyes and Myers was looking at, you know, sideways. That was awesome. They go their separate ways. Um, I kind of mentioned now, uh, LL Cool J is in this movie, you know, he's just in the movie. That's cool, I guess. Moving on from that, they obviously, they, there's, you know, some mistakes. Lori accidentally kills Cool J's character because she freaks out. So it just leaves off with her son, her son's girlfriend, and Lori. She decides to face Myers one on one. So she gets the kids out he locks her she gets this axe and calls for michael michael and that was awesome right with the theme orchestra song her coming towards michael and michael hiding in the shadows again the shadow thing's consistent and her you know facing her fears basically earlier again this movie's about alcoholism i'm not sure about the al alcoholism part probably was there but it's not the first thing the first thing i thought was like ptsd and trauma but i guess they spoke broken in like alcoholism issues as well which is fine it's good but it's not you know what i definitely noticed for the first time but anyways we have this like drawn out scene of michael versus Lord. And then, you know, Michael gets the upper hand and Lori gets the upper hand and you know, she doesn't. She has a disadvantage. They chase each other. He's running for him. And then this part, okay, hold on. I'm kind of drive off, right? They drive away from the school or I think she thinks she gets him, right? I think, okay, hold on. I remember. She thinks she defeats him. They get into an ambulance, whatever. The ambulance crashes. She feels like nothing, you know, something's not right. She goes there as well. She crashes a car into Michael, leaving him. It's lower half fucked up and his upper half still functional. And then she gets this ax. Michael's reaching out saying nothing and then this awesome shot she cuts off his head decapitates it and that was awesome would have been a pretty cool way to end the series again would have been you know <sighs> it wasn't it wasn't sadly so again her facing her fears and overcoming alcoholism and trauma and ptsd and finally killing myers this one thing is finally off her chest and she's finally conquered it would have been a really good way to end this movie and you know and then i think it ends i think yeah it ends after that she cuts off and it ends face the black the orchestra stream and it ends just what could have been what could have been but overall halloween h2o 20 years later I find it to be really good. Again, not a lot of people talk about this one. It's either in the middle. People think it's okay. I can see why, right? Following the success of Scream, kind of do the same thing, right? It's like 90s. Like, it, it just kind of feels like a Scream movie, especially hearing from the earlier scripts of like a copycat killer in a mask. It's like, okay, this is kind of clearly Scream, you know, inspired. It's inspired by Scream. But aside from that, I think it's really good. Lori struggling with life, having PTSD, overcoming alcoholism and, and trauma from 20 years earlier. Her son, relationship thing was cool and then michael killing that nurse in the beginning and slowly inching and inching closer 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 towards her and finally when they meet it's tense and awesome and cool and the head decap thing at the end was awesome only again if that was truly the end that would have been awesome but it wasn't i think halloween h2 is really good and next up the 28th will be halloween resurrection clearly looking forward to this 